Hey, what's up, guys? It's Don Quixote for fxray.com. Welcome to another amazing Photoshop tutorial. Today, we're going to do some serious stuff, skin retouching. And for retouching skin, we're going to use a special technique called frequency separation. But let me point out something up front. This is being a very radical retouching to show what is possible with this technique. It's not meant to be a guide. In the end, everyone has to decide on their own how far they would go. Frequency separation allows you to edit details like pores, pimples, skin blemishes, wrinkles, separated from color. We're gonna use so-called check layers to really see where we can adjust the gradients on a skin and other check layers to visualize the small details that might be overlooked in normal view mode. And here's a tip in advance. Never show a model how she looks with a check layer activated unless you want to make her feel super ugly. Nothing can escape those check layers, okay? Well, enough words. Let's actually get started. And I'm going to close this image here. First, we're going to open the original RAW file in Photoshop. That's something I normally would do in Lightroom, but in this case, I'll do it in Photoshop. We have some very bright spots on her face, which I try to reduce by dragging the highlight slider to the left. If you additionally hold the Alt key, you'll see if the picture overdrives at some point. I also add a little bit more details in the shadows by dragging the slider to the right. And again the Alt key to make sure we're good. I'm not trying to define my final look here, but I try to get the best out of the image and prepare it for retouching. Finally, I'm doing a quick white balance on my gray background. And let's adjust the settings here. I don't want a smart object. And let's change this to 8-bit and sRGB since you won't be able to see a difference on the video. And open the image. Let me show you first what frequency separation does. Basically, we have a low frequency for the color and a high frequency for the details. I press Command J twice to make two copies and name the upper one high and the other low. With low selected, I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur. And I find this to be a random value in other tutorials, but we take a closer look at different spots and try to find a radius just high enough to blur all details away without being exaggerated. I'm starting with 10, select a different spot, and here I see that I have to increase the amount to maybe 12 or 14. Then continue choosing other spots and really make sure I'm not seeing any pores and skin blemishes anymore. And that looks good so far. I think I'm gonna stick with 14. Even the red veins in her eyes disappeared. No wrinkles. I stay with 14. Then select the high layer and go to image, apply image. First, select the low layer as a reference. Depending on your picture's color depth, there are two different ways. For 8-bit, select Subtract with a scale of 2 and an offset of 128. For 16-bit, invert the channel, set Blending to Add and Offset to 0. Press OK and set the Blending Mode to Linear Light. Both layers of frequencies together result in the original image. If I turn off both of the frequency layers, you won't see any difference compared to the original image. And let's take a separate look at the layers. The high frequency includes all the details on a 50% gray background, while the low frequency really just has the color information. Combined, they result in my original picture. I delete the two layers and switch to our website fxray.com, go to Downloads, and select the Frequency Separation action for Retoucher. We have two versions, one for Photoshop CC and the other for versions below. Back in Photoshop, go to your Action window and select Load Actions. Choose the one we just downloaded, and I really prefer to use Actions in Button Mode. Here we have 8 actions for retouching. And we have a simple and an advanced frequency separation. If you're not using Photoshop CC, you'll find both versions in 8-bit and 16-bit, which are the gray ones. But Photoshop CC supports conditional actions, so I can make Photoshop check if it's 8-bit or 16-bit. 
Let's start with a simple frequency separation, again with a radius of 14. And the action basically did the same thing I showed you before, only in a few seconds. Let's delete the folder, and I want to show you some more of the features. One thing is to lock the background layer. The action renames the background layer in original and locks it so you can't accidentally paint or retouch on it anymore. You'll always will have the original as a reference. Now, let's continue with the advanced frequency separation action. Again, we stick with the predefined 14, and after a couple of seconds, Photoshop not only separates the image, but also added some check layers. The first three layers together create an inverted black and white solarization, which is good for recognizing gradients. And in the frequency separation folder, you'll find two frequencies, but they are locked, just to keep a reference for each frequency. But you also find editable layers clipped to each frequency, which are the ones we will be working on. The reference layers are good if you messed something up and need to get back to the original. You can always stamp it back or add a layer mask. Anyhow, it's there if you need it. Select the low frequency added layer and activate the check layer. We're going to smoothen out some spots, like this gradient over here. And I'm gonna use a lasso tool to make a rough selection and switch into mask mode to actually see my current selection. And I see a hard transition, which I try to soften by adding a Gaussian blur with maybe, maybe 10 pixels. Then exit the mask mode and go to filter, blur, motion blur. What do you wanna do? You wanna set the direction of the motion blur to the opposite direction of the gradient. Press Command H to hide the selection. It's still there, you just can't see it. And try to find the perfect distance so the gradient is pretty smooth. Then spot the next gradient you want to adjust, but this time I feathered a lasso from the beginning with 10 pixels to save a little bit more time. And again, once it's selected, Motion blur the transition in the opposite direction of the gradient. Command H to hide the layer, since it's hard to see what's going on with the selection in it. Okay, and a more generous spot here. A thing you really wanna do when retouching, you wanna create shortcuts for Gaussian blur and motion blur to fast enter these filters. Here's a spot that can be blurred. See how smooth the skin suddenly is. Okay, here's another one. And let's see what we changed in this few seconds. Okay, not bad. Let me show you one more technique. Select the mixer brush tool. The mixer brush comes with a couple of parameters and we already explained how to use this tool in our digital cartoon tutorial. Make sure to check it out. I'm gonna start with a wetness of 30%, load and mix both 30% as well, and a flow of 75%. Now, I use the mixer brush to blend the transitions and gradients. These are very small changes, as you can see, but they will make the skin look a lot more settled in the end. Okay, let's see. You really have to be careful not to exaggerate. Some more mixing over here. Okay, before, after. And let's see it on the actual image. Very good. Now let's continue with the high frequency. Activate the skin blemish check layer first and adjust the red tone so we can see a little bit more of the skin. Then select the high frequency added layer and the healing brush tool. Zoom in for the skin and by holding the Alt key you can define a reference and by dragging the mouse you can paint with that reference. Photoshop will then automatically adjust the contrast. 
It's a good advice not to drag the mouse, but to really just click on a specific point. Bigger blemishes should be removed with different references to avoid repeatings and patterns. You can also remove single hair since they are on a high frequency layer. Let's see the difference. I probably have to zoom in. You can also use the stamp tool for retouching on the high frequency layer. Especially for little spots, it's perfect, but you really have to be careful to not create pattern. And you can also shrink some of the longer hair in her face to make them not pop out that much. And well, that's something that really takes time. The more time you spend on this, the more perfect the skin will look, hopefully. That's actually where this tutorial ends, but we wanted to give you an idea how we continue retouching the entire skin in this image. That's why we're going to show you a time lapse of the next hour maybe I spend on this image, reduced to about 3 minutes. Hey guys, that was our time lapse. I hope you could get an idea what I did and how I did it. Enjoy retouching your own images with frequency separation and let us know if you have any questions. My name is Don Quixote. Take care.